Welcome to August 30th, 2024's H2B Report. My name is Damien DeNoble. So today we're going to look at the cap and we have numbers to examine both from USCIS and the Department of Labor. We are currently in the October 1st, 2024 cycle where we are applying for workers. You are applying for workers with a start date between October 1st and March 30th. Although if you're watching this, it's a whole lot closer to October 1st than March 30th. All right, so we have two sources where we can look at the cap. The first source, which we didn't look in past videos because it hadn't yet been published, is actually the fiscal year cap, cap cap from USCIS. Currently, as of August 26, 2024, there are 12,390 beneficiaries approved by USCIS, 10,113 beneficiaries that are pending for a total of 22,503 beneficiaries. Now today is August 30th, so that number today is probably higher. How high could it be? Well, that's where we want to go back to the Department of Labor's flag.dol.gov site and look at the numbers there. There, as we can see, that from Group A, 27,019 worker positions have been certified. From Group B, a further 4,964 positions have been certified for a total of 31,983 positions certified. That's just, um, that's just 1,017 positions shy of the cap as of today. That means you need to be getting your applications in now to get new workers. And I know the last of my certified positions hopefully are going out today. And um, I think I have one straggler that I have to send out to be in Tuesday. Now it's first come first serve. So get your positions in. Now don't panic. USCIS usually has a float of about 4,000 worker positions that they certify up above and beyond the 33,000 count. They don't officially say it, but the numbers indicate that this is the case. Bottom line though, it's time to get your USCIS applications in. Uh, we had projected that the cap would be reached September 18th. Based on these numbers, I actually kind of want to bring that projection back down. I'm going to say to be safe, you got to get your application in by September 10th. The reason I say that is because I think we're going to see the remainder of the certifications come in next Tuesday, which will get us technically beyond the application threshold. Uh, and at that point, uh, it's just going to be a matter of time before things fill in. So I'm going to say that the new cap that I'm projecting, I said September 10th, I meant September 8th, excuse me. It's September 8th. September 8th is the new cap that I am projecting. Um, that's the last date I think that applications will be good as they come in. Before, we have been going with September 18th, but actually certifications are going quite a bit faster right now than they did at this time last year. If you don't know how the USCIS application process works, let me just give you a few pointers. Number one, be really, really mindful of how much uh, money you actually have to pay for your H2B sort of your H2B application, your I-129 H2B application. If you have named workers, it's a different fee than if you have unnamed workers. If you're a big employer, meaning you have 25 or more employees, that's a different fee than you have to play, that you have to pay. Uh, than if you are either a 501c3 nonprofit or a small employer, somebody who has less than 25 employees. So what you have to do is you have to go check out the USCIS fee calculator, scroll down, pick I-129 H2B and look at the fees carefully. And don't forget, you need separate checks for your I-129 fee, your H2B mandatory fraud fee, which is always $150, and your mandatory asylum fee, which is going to be $600 or $300, depending on what you are as an employer, small, big, or nonprofit. And then, if you're doing premium processing, so you're filing Form 907, that's an additional $1,685. I always get the question, what's the advantage of having premium processing? Well, if you don't do premium processing, simply put, your application is going to go into a black hole. USCIS is only going to communicate with you through the US Post Office, US Postal Service. And so if there is a request for evidence or some other problem, like your application is not accepted, you're just not going to know. And if you're applying for first time workers and you get rejected for some reason, maybe your fee was wrong, maybe USCIS made a mistake, which happens a lot, then you're just going to be outside of the cap. So the premium service bot, on the other hand, gives you an e-notification as soon as your application uh, is accepted for processing. So you know it's been accepted, and if you don't get that e-notification, you're sending in another application to make sure you beat the cap. Although be careful with that. I've had, I've had a scenario where I've had two accepted before because USCIS was late with the e-notification, so 
uh, be really careful with that. In fact, just don't do that if you don't know what you're doing. But just know that if your e notification doesn't come in via email, after like four or five days, something could be wrong. Your application might not have been accepted and might have been rejected. Okay. Um, the other advantage is if there's a request for evidence, you can respond via fax. That uh, amazing technology from 19... 35, 52, 65, 75. At any rate, it's older than email. And uh, you also get access to a premium hotline, which, which does help a lot. So I'm not gonna lie, I love USCIS premium processing, but I'm not the one paying it. It's my clients and I get it. $1,685 is a whole lot. And it used to be quite a bit less before April 1st when the fees for everything went up and got more complicated. Thanks USCIS. What else should you be thinking about? Well, you should be thinking about April 1st season. If you have April 1st workers or kind of somewhere in between, in between October and April, you should be getting those prevailing wages in uh, and you should be planning for the future. So that's the report, okay? If you have any questions, you know, you, you, can, leave them, you can leave them here or you can reach out to our law firm and, you know, I'm happy to answer them. But these are designed to be fast. They're designed to be helpful, designed to keep you updated. Uh, you can watch prior episodes. You can watch our H2B video series where I go into full-length discussions about the H2B video program for further information. Thank you so much.